It's uh, Thursday, October 3rd, 2 o'clock. Very, very happy day for me. The St. Louis Cardinals are in the playoffs. I'm wearing my hat, wearing red, go Cardinals. And let's go on with the webinar. What we're going to be talking about is things that talk. So that's all sorts of gadgets like uh, Alexa, a Google, Google uh, Play, and there's all sorts of different versions of Alexa devices. One of my favorites is, the, is the, actually the Alexa View, which gives you a little screen. And the trouble with having two of these in the room is that I, it's going to answer. So I'm going to have to turn off one of them. Okay, so the Alexa screen is kind of fun because it uh, gives you a little more that you can see. So Alexa, what's on my calendar? Alexa, what's on my calendar? Your next four events are today at 3 p.m. There's monthly magazine meeting. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. there's extension coordination meeting. At 2 p.m. there's trail stewardship course on location filming. On Monday, October 7th at 9 a.m. there's cancel extension slash UAs slash CAS staff meeting with Ken White. So yeah, so it's kind of a nice thing. You can hook it up to your Outlook calendar pretty easily and get it to actually do something useful besides do silly things like Alexa, tell me a joke. Jimmy Fallon, take it away. Why did the college student get dizzy? She took a spin class. Yes, I know you're all laughing out there, uh, but you, you can do uh, silly things and good things like all new tech toys. It's just kind of a joke at first, but then you gradually figure out ways to use it. So I'll go through a few of the things uh, from the, from my, PowerPoint. So I started thinking about this several years ago, like where are we going to be if uh, extension isn't tuned into Alexa? So Alexa, what is extension? See, she stumped. Alexa, what is Utah State University extension? Here's something I found on Wikipedia. Utah State University is a public land grant research university in Logan, Utah. Okay, so that's not too bad. At least it has something, something on there, but it's not all that useful. Uh, I, I started getting excited about this. I got my little extension grant and used the money to go to a voice conference, which um, I was kind of surprised myself. I says, wow, there's somebody who's just doing a conference about voice stuff. And yes, there are. It's all about podcasts, about voice activated devices like uh, her name and Google and Siri and what Cortana and there's several other ones out there. Apple has a, has a pod thing too. But as you can see there, I was just kind of blown away. There were 5,000 people there and what, 800 exhibitors. And it's pretty amazing that all these Fortune 500 companies are getting into voice technology, whether it's just for devices like the home devices, or if it's for their answering machines. Uh, when you call in, they have a technology that'll lead you to the right place. And you know, it'll be a much, much more sophisticated than the some of the terrible expense experiences that you have now where it says, press one for Spanish or press two to go to the next menu. It'll be very interactive with using artificial intelligence. Why voice? Um, you know, when he first came out, it says, you know, how much lazier can you be that you have to talk to your thing to set the egg timer or some other little thing around the kitchen? Well, that, that's true, but it's also, it's, it's hands-free technology. And if you're cooking or just walking around the house and you don't want to sit down at a computer screen one more time, it makes a lot more sense if you can just talk to something. But it also breaks down literacy barriers 
handicapped, food safety, search time. I think it's really gonna be a big part of the baby boomers retirement life, which I will be experiencing before too much longer. Then just other voices in podcasts, audiobooks, Alexa skills, last regime podcast. I mean, you've probably noticed the explosion of podcasts available now. There's not enough time in a day to keep up with all the ones that you like. Uh, I've always been a big um, fan of audiobooks. It makes driving around uh, the state on long trips kind of interesting. I kind of always look forward to uh, listening to a book. I'll slow down on the way home because I, I don't want to get home before it's over. Things like that. I think Audiobooks are a big explosion. Uh, they're great for people like me who wear glasses and normal type faces are a little bit difficult to read in most books. So yeah, having somebody read it to me uh, while I'm driving or at the house doing some chores, I, it's a great convenience. Other devices, uh, like I mentioned, some of them, Amazon Dot, Amazon Show, there's an Amazon for for your car, I think they're going to int they're integrating them into all sorts of things like uh, smart watches. They just came out with several new devices. One, which is hard to believe, is actually just a ring that you can uh, talk to, <laughs> uh, and Echo earbuds, uh, Echo glasses. Which I guess we'll see how that works out. The Google glasses were kind of a failure, but you know the. The Echo glasses just are glasses that have earphones built into them. So you can say, uh, you know, where's the closest Starbucks or something like that. Uh, and the app stores are just growing exponentially. You, if you have an Amazon account, you can go on there and browse and find, you know, almost anything you can think of, uh, you know, dog psychology, uh, <laughs> any hobby that you have, there's a skill for it. Some of them very, some of them charge, but very few of them do. The ones that charge are, are sort of like other apps here, 99 cents or $1.99. So it's worth a try, but you do have to go into an Amazon account and activate them. And so it depends on how you feel about Amazon, if they're tracing your every move and you don't like that, it's up to you. <laughs> but they're here to stay. Growth speakers are arrived at 35% globally in 2019. So they're everywhere. Um, again, whether you like it or not, if you think you're being surveilled or listened to, I, I think you're just going to have to give up on that idea that there really is privacy in the world right now. Uh, somebody somewhere can hack anything. And so if, unless you want to live off the grid completely, I don't hold, I don't hold much hope for being able to live a totally private life. Just try to keep the viruses off your computers. Don't uh, share your passwords and credit card numbers. <laughs> okay. The evolution of artificial intelligence, machine learning. I think you all remember how bad artificial in te text was. I remember the first cell phone I got where it would, it, uh, it would have a thing that would take your voicemail and turn it into text. And it was just hilariously funny seeing what came out of it. Well, it's, it almost never misses now because part of artificial intelligence is machine learning as it does more and more and more. It learns more and more what your voice is like and how to discern between different words. I always have joked that, yeah, my mom was the first uh, speech to text uh, innovator. She was what they called then a secretary and she took dictation. And then this first YouTube translation, the same way, you know, if you wanted to get uh, uh, subtitles like most people want to have on, on Facebook and YouTube now so they can watch videos without everybody listening to what they're watching and uh, they generate them pretty darn close now and if in with a few minutes extra tweaking you can get them perfect what is extension doing well we have three skills on 
on uh, Amazon Alexa now. We have USU Extension, which is mainly gardening tips right now. Let me see if I can get it to go. Alexa, play USU Extension. Welcome back to Utah State University. This is Terrell Roper, Extension Pomologist at Utah State University. By now, many- Alexa, stop. Okay, so that one's mainly uh, gardening, a very short uh, little podcast that originally played on the Green Thumb on UPR Public Radio. Uh, and I think that is also the trend you're gonna get. You're gonna get these little bits of uh, podcast information instead of the long form things. I think people got used to the very first uh, podcast like Serial, which spent you know seven weeks following this famous crime. But I think people just want these little bits of information. So these are two to three minutes. I think that's uh, I think that's where we're headed. See another one we have is the Remote Work Initiative. Let's see if I can do it. Alexa, play Remote Work Radio. Welcome back to Remote Work Radio. Now on to the latest episode. It's kind of nice. It puts up the graphic too. If you have Welcome the to show, Remote Work Radio, where we chronicle the stories of people who live where they want and make their living by working remotely as employees, freelancers, and entrepreneurs. This podcast aims to empower you to make your work situation remote friendly. And Alexa, stop. Okay, so Remote Work Radio, and I think we have one more. Alexa, play Tomorrow's Innovators with Paul Hill. Alexa, stop. Doesn't get it first time off it. Alexa, play Tomorrow's Innovators. Welcome back to, to Paul Hill's Tomorrow's Innovators podcast. Now, on to the latest episode. Okay, Alexa, stop. So, anyway. Uh, I was able to put those three together without a whole lot of tr trouble. Like most things on the web now, there's templates and easier ways to do it that you don't really have to know coding. Alexa, stop. Uh, that you don't have to know coding or anything all that fancy. Uh, you just need to know how to host a podcast and then connect it to an Alexa skill. And maybe I'll do a little something on podcast in, an, in another uh, webinar, but that's all you need to do. Should I be afraid of it? Uh, like I said previously, I, if you want to be afraid of it, I don't know what to tell you. It's <laughs> don't get one in your house. It's like a lot of technologies. You people will fight it, and then I think it'll just become part of your daily life, like uh, barcodes. Remember, people didn't trust barcodes at the grocery store because. You know, they could be instantly changed and you'd pay two cents more for your can of peas than you should have. And, but really compared to a human typing into a keyboard really fast at the checkout, uh, I think we all agree that barcodes were a good upgrade. Does it ever get it wrong? Yes, it sometimes gets it wrong, but like I said, machine learning, it learns it's by its mistakes, unlike a lot of humans and and it uh, will get it better next time. Okay, uh, my example of why we need this. Uh, UPR, Utah Public Radio, had a, a story on not too long ago about a guy who went, well, ill-advised, went hiking in the back country by himself, uh, had his phone with him though, and he felt pretty safe, and he fell down a, an embankment and severely broke his leg. And so you can imagine he's out there and his phone fell out during the fall. So he somehow struggled back up the hill, found the phone in the snow, but oh my gosh, the phone's face was cracked. So he couldn't dial a number, but he had the presence of mind to remember that he could use Siri on his 
Apple phone to uh, call 911 or a relative, I can't remember which it was, but by being able to do that, I mean, it, uh, it literally saved his life or at least kept him from a very a severe time in the back country. Challenges for marketing. Okay, the thing about these like YouTube videos or podcasts or anything is once you make them, how do you get them to be used? Well, it's like word marks and other things. Uh, what you have to create is a sonic signature. And I think if you listen to any podcast, you kind of get that idea that it's that o opening 10 seconds of music or sound effects or somebody's voice that reminds me, oh, I know what's going to come. It's going to be Thistle and Shamrock, or it's going to be Wild About Utah. That's the one I always listen to because it has this little uh, Irish flute that comes on at the beginning, and I always recognize it. So if you're going to come up with a podcast, you need to have something memorable and stick with it. Don't make it too long. I don't want to listen to the... Uh, EEO statement about extension before I get to the podcast. So just make it fresh. And also, yes, if you don't update it, people will stop coming back. Same way with web pages, same way with everything else. So, and there's ways to automate it so that you can schedule postings. So you can do 10 in one day and then, and then just upload them. You don't have to be there present every day. Ah, uh, what kinds of voice? A lot of, at my workshop I went to, they talk about, do people want a real voice or a robot's voice? And I think we're gradually uh, trending toward a real voice. So Alexa is sort of a hybrid real voice, but I think there's some companies that are taking actually the people in their company and recording them and and putting that into a computer system that uh, does that. So when somebody calls for information from their company, they will have the real voices of people who work there or at least did work there at one time. And in the brave new world, which is not too far away, you're gonna be able to get anybody's celebrity voice on your device. The one that's gonna be out here in another month or so is you're gonna be at Morgan Freeman to be your voice on Amazon devices. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that, whether that's the PG Morgan Freeman or the R-rated Morgan Freeman. Maybe you have, will be able to uh, choice. No, actually not Morgan Freeman, sorry. Morgan Freeman would be very empathetic and a great narrator. What I'm saying is Samuel L. Jackson is the one that's gonna be coming out first. And then if you've watched any of his movies, you know, uh, gets a little R-rated sometimes and not sure if that's what you want the kids to hear to uh, wake you up in the morning. Okay, this is a little off in the weeds from the topic, but the other thing I learned about at the voice conference was the three word address. And this, this sounds like the craziest thing you've ever heard of, but they've come up with a way of mapping every three by three meter square on earth with a three word address. And you think, well, why is this important? Well, if you ever go on Google and look up your address, mine shows up in, you know, there's, I live at 1738 Country Club Drive and it shows up, there's a 25, 30 states that have that address. And so if you're in an emergency, um, you know, you, you'd have a lot harder time getting them to say, to translate where you live because lots of people there. But the three word address is very, very specific to where you live. So look at that website, look it up for yourself. It's, it's really fun because some of the three words are funny. So look it up. Uh, Utah State University and the address there for the middle of the university is Clay Mint Fool. 
I mean, isn't that just fun? <laughs> that you, and you'll be able to remember that because it's just kind of fun. But since if I had an emergency and calling the EMTs, they got to know which building I'm in. Uh, so I'm in the ag building and I am proud to say that our three word address is solved best brain. Is that, is that great or what? I mean, I just put that on your business card that you can find me at solve best brain. And so eventually they're going to start integrating this into all devices. It's going to be a great help to emergency services and yeah, just mind blown that this actually somebody was able to do this. It's a organization in England that designed it. Okay, so I'm wrapping up here and I don't see any questions yet. Let me see, let me go back. I, I stopped sharing. It doesn't look like anybody showed up, but I hope you're all just entertained as heck later when you view this. So I will just end with a little thing that I put together. And where am I? There we are. Share this. I'm not making any political statement about climate change or anything else. I just thought it was kind of fun to put together a little video using nothing but these devices. Global warming and climate change are terms for the observed century scale rising the average temperature of the Earth's climate system and its related effects. Climate change, a change in global or regional climate patterns, in particular a change apparent from the mid to late 20th century onwards and attributed largely to the increased levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide produced by the use of fossil fuels. Climate change is a change in the statistical distribution of weather patterns where that change lasts for an extended period of time, that is, decades to millions of years. Climate change may refer to a change in average weather conditions, or in the time variation of weather around longer-term average conditions. Climate change is caused by factors such as biotic processes, variations in solar radiation received by Earth, plate tectonics, and volcanic eruptions. Sorry, I don't have the answer to that question. Okay. All right, so that's just uh, three of the most popular devices answering the same question, a very difficult question, a very controversial question, but that's where we're going to be at because uh, you are just gonna walk around the house or in your car and ask it questions and not uh, be keyboarding all the time. I think uh, you'll enjoy it whether you have arthritic hands or not. So thanks for joining me. I uh, hope somebody watches this later. If you have any questions, give me a call. You know my email with extension and uh, any suggestions for other webinars. I'm thinking maybe one on just making a very simple podcast will be the next one. Bye.